Hello, friends, and happy Stratterday. Cyberry here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use guide. Real quick, before I get started today, thank you for tuning in. Uh, the channel is aiming for a thousand subs right now. I'm trying to get that as quickly as possible, and as such, I'd greatly appreciate your subscription, uh, regardless of how often you watch my content. So, if you'd be so kind, subscribe down below, hit the like button, and share this guide with a friend. Your support, as always, is appreciated. Also, I'm excited because as of recording this, we just saw the latest trailer uh, just a few hours ago for Darkest Dungeon 2, showing off some of the gameplay we can expect to see very, very soon. So check it out if you haven't. Uh, you know, if you want to talk about it at all, down in the comments is a great place. Um, anyway, that shit's out of the way. Let's get down to business. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into how to play the Cleric Errant. The Cleric Errant was released June 16th of 2021, and last updated August 1st of 2021. Um, the credits, real quick, uh, Badger created this class, um, Ua did the animations and the sound effects, uh, Cat did the barks, Red Die Number 5 is credited for the trinkets and the icons, um, and Miracle Butt, Lichen Bill, S Purple, and Seal are credited for the Incandescent Whisperer mod, where this character comes from. So the stats real quick. I'm going to start with the HP. It's going to be a 35 at first resolve, and progress all the way to a 63 at the fifth resolve. Uh, this is top of the line HP. Uh, very, very tanky. Uh, it's the same HP stat as the Leper at all these levels. So he's going to have a significant chunk of HP. To deal with. The dodge is going to start out at a 0 and progress by 5 every level to a 20 at 5th resolve. Uh, this is below average, but it's not bad. Um, this is the same growth as a leper or an arbalist would have, uh, so it's just a little lower than what I would consider the average dodge. Uh, Prod is a 0. The speed is going to start at a 1. At 3rd resolve, it will be a 2, and at 5th resolve, this will become a 3. Uh, this is a very low speed stat. This is the same growth as a Crusader. He's going to have a lot of his allies go first, um, unless you were going to pack him down with some uh, speed growth quirks and or trinkets, uh, which might work for you, but don't mind him going last fairly often. Uh, the accuracy is a 0, and the crit is going to be a 4% at first resolve, and this will move up to an 8% at final resolve. Uh, this is an above average crit, uh, depending on the move you use, or if you have quirks or trinkets that boost crit, uh, you could get a decent chunk of crits with him, but it's pretty much going to be fairly average. And finally, the damage mod is going to be a 5 to 9 at first resolve, and it will become an 8 to a 14 at final resolve. Um, this is what I consider to be average frontline. Uh, it's the same damage growth as a man at arms. So um, he's going to put out a decent amount of damage if that is your goal. Otherwise, he is a good support and tank class. So let's just go straight into his combat skills. Uh, with the first one Hammer of Faith. Hammer of Faith is usable for rank 1 or 2 and can target rank 1 or 2 enemies. This is a melee attack with an accuracy base of 85, it does full damage, and has a crit mod of plus 3%. This is also going to have armor piercing, and it's going to do an additional 50% damage against stunned opponents. So this is going to do a good chunk of damage. The armor piercing is going to be really useful uh, when you're dealing with high prod enemies, or uh, in the wield specifically. So it's very useful in those scenarios. And the bonus damage against stunned creatures brings a lot of synergy into the mix. Um, it's very similar to like visceral attacks, like the Bloodborne classics have, um, but it's 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 his own thing. Second ability is Shield Bash. This is also usable for rank one or two, and can target rank one or two enemies. It's a melee attack with an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 50%, and a crit mod of plus 3%. This is going to stun the target with a 90% base, 
and debuff that target minus two speed with 100% base. So the stun is a little bit less than the normal potent stuns you're going to find, uh, but it's also a little more powerful. So uh, it's kind of a good mix of damage and stun potential um, as far as a utility move is concerned. I personally really like it. Uh, the range is uh, front rank only, so uh, if you're going to pair this uh, with other stunners, it's probably best to put it with a uh, Plague Doctor stunning the whole back rank, or just someone who has a different reach. The third combat skill is Blinding Glare. It's usable for rank 1, 2, or 3, and targets every opponent on the opposing side. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 90%, and no crit modifier. This attack bypasses stealth, it will de-stealth everyone on the enemy side, and increase the torch by 6. This is going to debuff all those targets minus 5 accuracy. So this is not a bad debuff, and the fact that you're targeting accuracy is going to help a ton. Uh, the stealth and de-stealth synergy here is actually going to be really nice, especially in uh, middling level dungeons or when they start introducing stealth classes into the mix. This is going to be very useful for that. Uh, it's a good utility skill. Fourth combat skill is Orison. It's usable from rank 1, 2, or 3, and can target rank 2, 3, or 4 enemies. This is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85, a damage modifier of negative 30%, and a crit mod of plus 5%. This is going to buff all your allies for plus 3 accuracy every time you use it. Uh, the 100% base is there as a standard. I'm not sure that you're going to need uh, to consider that base at all as it's a buff and it's always going to apply to your friends. The bigger the beast, the greater the glory. The fifth combat skill is Intercession. Usable from rank 1 or 2. You're going to select the target and you're going to heal them 1 to 2 HP at this opening resolve and it's going to heal 2 points around for 2 rounds. This is a good mix of uh, single target direct healing and heal over time, um, and I believe, let's take a look at this final level. Yeah, the, uh, the heal over time of four points a round for two rounds is actually pretty potent. Just those by itself is eight over the next two rounds, and that is pretty balanced with like a Vestal's single target heal. So it's not bad as a single target healer if you want to equip this. Uh, you can get a lot out of it. The sixth combat skill is Knight's Vow. This is usable from any rank. You're going to select an ally, you're going to guard that ally, and you yourself are going to heal 10% of your max HP and heal over time two points around for two rounds. So this is a rather potent self-heal. Um, this is a good way if you've taken damage to heal that up, but it's also a good way to set up a, a guard on anyone else. It's got some good synergy that way. And the final of his combat skills is Sanctification. This is also useful from any rank, and you're going to select an ally or himself with this, and they are going to pick up a little um, a torch icon overlay. And while they have that, the next three friendly skills that target uses is also going to heal the party. At this level, it's two. Uh, it's going to grow a little bit to a, uh, an AoE heal of four at final level. And it's also going to buff that target you target with this by two speed. So this is a good uh, utility skill that is synergized as well with um, friendly skill users. So you can basically target somebody with this who isn't a healer by any means, but does a lot of friendly moves. And you can every time they use a friendly skill, also get an AoE heal of 2 to 4 HP per level. 
Um, this can give you more healing than it says. It can, I don't know if it's a crit or not. Sometimes I see heals of six or even eight HP off of this. So it's actually pretty uh, potent and it can be very versatile in the right party. I'm gonna try it out in a little bit with the Chester because, you know, either Battle Ballad or Inspiring Tune is gonna be a friendly skill and get a lot of use. A brilliant confluence of skill and purpose. So depending on what your uh, skill set is and what combat skills you're going to run out with, um, you can pretty much build a lot of versatile stuff, uh, support, and sometimes damage uh, comes really, really naturally on this class. So let's take a look at camping skills real quick. He's going to have the generic encourage, wound care, and pep talk that you would expect. Uh, the first of the unique camping skills is Rekindle. Rekindle is time cost 3. You're going to select the party, and they are going to heal 10 stress and heal 10% of their HP. This is a good synergy party heal move. Um, it's especially good if you've got a couple guys low on HP, because uh, it's going to shore that up a bit and also recover stress, and it only costs you 3 points. Uh, it's very good to use in camping scenarios. The second camping skill is Ember's Grace. Time cost 3. You're going to select a companion and they're going to get 20% bonus damage for the next 4 battles. And plus 50% restoration amount received for the next 4 battles. If they are not religious, however, they're going to take 15 stress damage. This is not bad. Um, especially if you were primarily doing restoration healing. Uh, if you were using the Cleric Errant's restoration healing moves, this is a good way to uh, synergize with that. But otherwise, some other healers come to mind. My Megus comes to mind, specifically here. Uh, the the, uh, the Milkmaid also does some good restoration healing. So the, um, synergizing well with those classes, this can be a very good prep camping skill for somebody who's taking a sh ton of damage and you just want to recover that. The next camping skill is Mark of the Flame. Time cost 4. This is going to prevent nighttime ambush. It's going to give you a minus 20% chance that the party is surprised for the next 4 battles. And this is going to reduce your torch burn rate by 30%. Um, so this is a very good, unique uh, prevent nighttime ambush skill. It's going to be very good for conserving torch. It's also going to be very good to make sure that your party is not surprised by unscouted uh, fights popping up in hallways and such. So it's very good in a lot of scenarios, and time cost 4 is pretty standard. And the last camping skill is Light's Protection. This is a time cost 1 camping skill, targeting the Cleric Errant themselves, and this will add 15% prot for the next 4 battles. Uh, this is not bad if you have like 1 point to use, uh, it's a very good way to use that 1 point, as not a lot of things have that low of a cost. And uh, he can always use the extra prop. All right. In addition, let's see a couple other things to go over. Uh, his crit effect is going to temporarily buff his HP healing by thirty percent. Uh, so, you know, every time he gets a crit, he's going to have a more potent healing ability uh, for a few rounds, and that's going to, you know, help him synergy-wise. Um, other unique traits he's got going on, when he is fully healed, when he gets healed to his full HP, he is going to heal all allies 10% of their maximum HP uh, at that moment. So if you have another healer in the party, if you can prioritize healing the Cleric Errant to full HP, you're going to get more out of that. So if you got single target healing, that can get him to full uh, use it in most scenarios, and you'll get kind of an AoE bump from there. Other things to consider uh, when you're composing your party, um, if you, you pair him up with another support unit, uh, and you start using that sanctification move, um, the combo of him using sanctification on another support unit, and that support unit using 
friendly skills to give you other bonuses, you're going to get an AoE heal out of it as well. Um, it's a very good synergy, I find, and I'm, I haven't tried it yet with the Jester, like I'm going to do soon, uh, but I anticipate it being very good for that. Other than that, um, quirks... What would I prioritize for his quirks? I think the stats he would get the most out of um, are going to be like Prot. In my case, I think Dodge is very important, so but I, I would add that as well. Um, and also HP. So things like Luminous, Hard Skinned, uh, Tough, I think it is, that does the HP bonus. Um, Warrior of Light is also good, because he's got a unique mix of melee and ranged attacks. Um, I would probably lock most of those. I wouldn't really focus too much on his crit unless you have other trinkets you're going to consider that are going to add to that as well. Uh, but combined, you can focus on crit through both those and get a rather big bang for your buck in that case. So, let's real quick look at his trinkets. Um, I have a few of them. There are nine... Um, and that's going to include two Crimson Port, as you expect, a Color of Madness Trinket, and a Sunward Trinket. But first we're going to look at is the Martyr's Crown. Um, I have a copy of this that I'm going to be running into a dungeon with later, uh, but we'll sum it up now. It's going to give 50% damage reflection to the Cleric Errant, who already has a low dodge, so he's going to get hit a lot. This is going to get a lot of use, and when you are hit, you are going to mark yourself making yourself a priority target. This is pretty good, honestly. Um, even by itself, without in considering any uh, combat skill abilities, this is going to be very defensive and get a decent amount of offense out of it. Uh, the next one is the Prayer Book. This is going to add 20% to the healing that he does, and it's going to minus his Max HP by 15%. Um, so getting a more potent heal out of him is fairly important. Uh, but I find that that max HP negative... That's a pretty big chunk for him. So I'm not sure I would use this a ton. Uh, but there are other ways, if you're interested, to get more healing out of this class. Other trinkets you can go to. So I would probably prioritize some of those over this, but it's still not bad for an uncommon trinket. And then we got two of the common trinkets here. Uh, the next is the Protective Necklace, which is going to add 10% prot at the cost of one speed. This isn't a bad trade-off. He's already going to be um, near the end of the round, and 10% prot is a significant boost, especially if you get this in the early game. It's going to be pretty useful for a while. And the other common trinket I have is the Stout Targe. It's the normal shield. It's going to add 15% to his stun chance in exchange for a minus 3 to his accuracy. Not bad for a common trinket. Uh, the 15% stun chance is going to be very useful for shield bash, uh, but I find there are other ways to do that as well, especially late game when these trinkets are just outshined by some other trinkets you get by then. So, having breezed through that at a pretty good speed, mind you, um, we are actually going to go take a look. We're going to go into this quest, I think. Maybe this one. Yeah, I feel like... I feel like this one would be a better choice because I've got some bleed in the, in the comp. Uh, so we're going to go down here, and we're going to try and show off some of uh, that um, synergy we got going on with the friendly skills and sanctification, because uh, I find that's the most fun way I, I know of, at least, to play with the Cleric Errant. They breed quickly down there in the dark. But perhaps All right. we can slay them even faster. We do have a fight at this dead end. I think I'll go for it. Oh, there's one here too. Nice. Well, we're gonna we're gonna start this fight. We don't need this invitation. But it's nice to just go get in a fight every once in a while. You're going first. 
Okay, I guess I will use Finale then. Yeah. Annihilated. Okay. We are going to start with Sanctification on the Jester. There's that torch we were talking about. Well, I'm just gonna shoot you. I just want him dead. Give them no quarter. Well, there's some, there's some HP missing. All right, we're gonna hit Battle Ballad. And there is our HP heal. Too. So I find that was very potent. Foolish horrors. As a heal. Brought low and driven into the mud. Now we don't necessarily need to continue guarding people. I think a good option here. I'm gonna go with Shield Bash. Uh, for some extra offense. Man. Really that fast? Oh yeah, of course you are. Eight other skill. Okay, all right. If you want to go first every time? I guess that's okay. We're gonna hit shield bash. Another one falls. Didn't need the stun. He's dead already. Be gone, fiend. Well, let's just leave you in the back then if you're gonna go first more often than once in a blue moon. Oh, it's your shield bash. Let's try blinding goo. Binding blinding glare? Was it blinding glare? Yeah. It's a lot of L's, yo. We don't need no stuff for that stuff. Straight to the next combat. Let's go. All right. Well, well. I'm going to actually do that. Precision and power. Okie doke. Well, I'm going to. I don't need to blind and glare you guys necessarily. Um, I'm going to use Orism to try and get an accuracy buff on my allies. Let's finish you off. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Hell yeah. Faith. Continue the onslaught. Destroy Hell yeah. Them all. all right, I think I've pretty much showed off most of his offensive moves. I have not shown off intercession. Um, shouldn't be a big deal. We've got to our three battles anyway. Overall, 
Cleric Errant is a very durable and fun kind of uh, tanky and also support and heal focused unit. Um, so I would try them out today if I were you. Uh, the Cleric Errant is a lot of fun and uh, they put a lot of love into this creation. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We've got another uh, guide coming up next week on Saturday, probably. Uh, there should be some new Darkest Dungeon 2 content coming out next week. Um, and I should have another Let's Play for DD1 coming out on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of content, and uh, it may be a little short on the editing side, just to get it out in time. Uh, but uh, if you can bear with that, be glad to have you here at the channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay frosty.